Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman, and in this lesson, I'm going to share ideas for playing polonaise in G minor with artistry. And we're even going to mix in a little improvisation. Let's check out the score to get started. Playing with artistry is sometimes called your interpretation of the piece. If you listen to a great performance, you might say, oh, I love how they interpreted that piece. And that's just saying you love the artistic way that they chose to play it. Every piece is like a script and you get to interpret it or turn that script into a living, interesting performance. And that's your unique interpretation. So when you interpret a piece to play it with artistry, you need to know when this piece was composed because that will affect how you interpret it. Now, anything composed by Bach or Scarlatti or Handel or Vivaldi, those were all composers from the Baroque era. And the Baroque era was approximately from the year 1600 to 1750, which happens to be the year Bach died. He was such an important figure from the Baroque era that we basically make his, the year he died, the end of the Baroque era. Now, again, we don't know who composed this. I've written anonymous here for this edition, but it comes from the Anna Magdalena Bach notebook, which remember, Johann Sebastian Bach prepared for his wife to learn some pieces. And so they were all pieces from that era. So when you're learning any piece from the Baroque era, there are certain things you should do. For example, don't use the damper pedal. They didn't have one the same way that we have one. Their pianos were less resonant and loud. And so the damper pedal will just ruin the style of most Baroque pieces. So just don't even think about touching that damper pedal. I also find music from the Baroque era very elegant and graceful. And one of the reasons for that is many of the pieces from the Baroque come from dance forms. The Polonaise was a traditional dance and it was in 3-4 time signature and it originated as a peasant folk dance in Poland but it became popular and eventually spread to France and all over Europe where it was used in royal courts for entertainment at fancy balls. So remember, this music was the cool dance music of the day. Remember when the dab was popular or flossing? Well, this was one of their popular dances back in the day. Mademoiselle, do you want to dance the Polonaise? Yeah, baby! When I play this Polonaise, I like to think of music for when all the Queen's royal guests are marching into the ballroom to be introduced. And now presenting the Duke of Grandenbury. So when you play Polonaise, let's make it elegant, graceful, refined. Remember, don't be in a rush. The Duke wouldn't be running in late. You know, he's going to walk in very nobly and regally. Now, with the Baroque era, remember that dynamics were usually not written in by the composer. So if you see these dynamics here, those were all added by me as suggestions. If you get other ideas for the dynamics, go for it. Also, remember that in Baroque, they usually didn't put in articulations like slurs or staccatos. And so you can also decide how you want to interpret. I like to play this very legato because I think that reinforces the style. But you could add some staccati on certain notes, maybe on some of these 16th notes. I prefer it legato, but there's no reason you couldn't try out some staccati. Also, when you have three quarter notes in a row, like here in measure 11, again, I like to play it legato, but I've heard some people interpret like this. You can put a little separation in between each note. Ta, ta, ta. That can be called a detached 
detached style. So you can detach those quarter notes from each other. You can do that in the left hand too. When the right hand, like in measure nine, the right hand's playing this, the left hand can separate a little bit in between each quarter note. And then same thing here, you can separate in both hands if you want. See, and I added some staccati on those eighth notes. So I thought that sounded nice. But again, I tend to prefer this legato, but try out different things and see what you like. I want this to be your interpretation. So many possibilities. What about here in the last two measures? That would be a legato interpretation, but what about... That's possible as well. Which sound do you like best? Part of interpreting a piece is making some of those choices. Now, I would prefer that you make choices that still fit in with the Baroque spirit and style, which remember is elegance and grace. So one good choice wouldn't be to like, you know, play it rushed or fast or sloppily. That's just not true to the spirit of the Baroque. Try to find an interpretation that brings out the spirit and elegance of the music. Now, the last thing I want to talk about today is how to have some real fun with this by adding some improvisation on the repeats. In the Baroque era, they were improvisers. Sometimes we only think of improvisation as something jazz musicians do, but that's just not true. Classical musicians for hundreds of years have been improvising. And it was customary on repeats to do some improvising. So how are we going to do that? Well, if you're not ready to just bust out you know, some new notes, you can do some very simple things by adding some ornamentation or some simple passing notes or neighbor tones. Let me give you an example of a neighbor tone. See how we have a repeated note here, this A? Well, a neighbor tone just goes next door, like a next door neighbor. We could add this G here a step below and make these all 16th notes. And we could do that alteration or embellishment on the repeat. So the second time through, we'd get See, so that's a fun little note you could add. I'm just gonna give you some ideas, but when you improvise, I hope you'll come up with your own unique ideas too. But feel free to copy my ideas and then add to them, change them. Another common place to add ornamentation in Baroque music is near the end of a phrase, or sometimes right on the cadence. Like a cadence note, like this, remember where we come to rest at the end of a phrase is called a cadence. That's a common place in the Baroque period to add a mordant. Remember, mordant is where you take the note and you play the note immediately below it, and then you go right back to the note you started on, and that's the symbol for mordant. So here, you could play that G, F sharp, G, and I'm gonna use F sharp because we've been using the melodic minor scale on this line so far, and so I think I'll stick with that. And here's how that would sound. Doesn't that sound kind of fun? That sounds very Baroque. You can also add a trill on this B flat. And remember, a trill symbol, you can just use that zigzag without the slash. So it looks just like a mordant, but without the slash. And you'd start on the note above, so you'd play C, B flat, C, B flat, really quickly on that one note, like this. And if you want to do the trill and the mordant, it'd get really fancy. So you can have lots of fun with that. Here are a few other ideas. If you have two notes that are a skip apart, you can add in passing tones. A passing tone is just a note that connects two notes that are a skip apart. See, I can add in that C there, and of course, I'll have to make that 16th notes. So here we can have And then I could do the same thing maybe here. And just adding a passing tone between that C and that A. So then we have And that can sound really delightful and fun when you do the repeat. Here's another fun place for a mordant. 
you can just quickly play B flat, A, B flat right there. Listen to how that would sound. I like that. Uh, if you want to get really fancy like in here, you can add in a whole bunch of passing tones. So basically, I'm ignoring this G. I'm going to just X that out. And instead of that E flat G, I'm going to play. Right? Sounds fun, huh? And then, is there anywhere in this measure that you could add a passing tone? Well, notice these skips here. You could add a passing tone there, or there maybe, or both. Let's see what that would sound like. Yeah, so many possibilities. These are just my ideas. I hope you'll come up with your own interesting ideas for embellishing, improvising on the repeat. So the first time you play through, just do it normal, and then when you do the repeat, add in a few little variations. It can be subtle and small, but have fun with it. Make it your own. Every once in a while, I hear a student say, oh, Baroque music is boring, it's so old-fashioned. Well, this is one way to make Baroque music not boring. Remember, this used to be their party music. They liked to party back then too, just in their own way. They liked to dress up fancy and be elegant and regal. And so you can have fun with this too. It's like dressing up for a costume party. You're putting on a different character when you go back in time to the Baroque period. Go back in time and be one of them have some fun with this party music. So let's listen to this entire last line with some of these embellishments written in. And I added in a couple more passing notes at the end there. I did a little B A G da -da -dum, to finish it off. The possibilities are endless. Great job learning how to play polonaise in G minor with artistry. As always, thanks for watching and learning with me, and happy practicing! You're looking kind of sad today, Scuba. Everything okay, friend? Oh, I just realized I'm never going to be cool. Cool? You're super cool. You tell great jokes. You, you've got that cool snorkel mask thingy. I know. I'm not talking about jokes. I want to be able to do cool dance moves. Dance moves? Yeah. I've tried and tried to learn to floss, but it just doesn't work without arms. Oh. Or legs. Huh? Oh my goodness. You're right. I don't have legs either. I'm hopeless. There is one popular dance move. Well, popular in the 80s at least. I could teach you. Really? What is it? Head banging. <laughs> oh, cool. I get it. <laughs> now try this. <laughs> oh, ow, ow, ow. Ah, that hurts. That's part of the fun. What? Okay. Uh, kids, do not try this at home. <laughs> yeah, or Mr. Hoffman's insurance premiums will go through the roof. My head's going to go through the roof. <laughs> That's the spirit. Ah, am I cool yet? You are the coolest, my friend. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, oh, oh, oh.